In this video, we are focused on frontal plane cogs. Frontal plane being the side-to-side -side plane, and I'm going to actually have Jesse demo what that looks like, but just reminding you that your cogs that we're referring to are your the primary structures of your body, your pelvis, your ribcage, and your skull. So the frontal plane is the side-to-side -side plane. So Jesse, if you could put your fingers on your hip bones, but us actually... We can also use her pants line as our reference. So she's going to bend one knee, and what you should see is that the opposite side of her pelvis hikes and the side of the bent knee drops. And then she's going to switch sides, and it's always the opposite side should hike and the same side drops like a teeter-totter. So the pelvis is tilting like a teeter-totter, hiking and dropping. Now, very easy for people, we would like you to stay centered around an axis. However, it's very easy. Most people tend to go off axis and I'm gonna have Jesse show what that looks like. So if you could start over and start, not by shifting, but by bending your knee, because that's how, yeah, and then, beautiful. So that's where people end up. Uh, but we want you to stay on access. So we have a little prop that we use and um, very easy to make. And it's called a plumb bob. In our case, it's just a bunch of carabiners at the bottom of a string, but you could use anything that's like a weight. A fishing weight works just great. And that will help you realize whether you're staying on access or not. So she's going to hold it basically at her navel. And then, Jesse, if you could show them what off access looks like that the plumb bob will swing wildly, whereas we want it to stay, if she's doing it correctly, will stay centered between her feet. So we recommend doing this in front of a mirror. And I'll have you notice what she does to get the plumb bob to stop swinging. Once it starts swinging, is she just touches it to the floor and then lifts it a tiny bit to get the swing out of it. Okay, so monitoring the plumb bob, you're doing this facing a mirror, monitoring the plumb bob, you should see it stay basically centered between your feet. So she's gonna soften her right knee, and we should see her left side hike and her right side drop, and then she's going to straighten that right knee, and now she's going to soften the left knee, and we should see the left side drop and the right side hike. And again, we are all human, so she, she likes to hike the right side and struggles a little bit to hike the left side, so you probably don't see quite as much movement, but notice her plumb bob is staying beautifully centered. Now we're gonna move up, up to the rib cage, and she's getting that nice teeter-totter effect in her pelvis, beautiful. She's gonna hold the plumb bob this time at the base of her breastbone or anywhere in that vicinity, and again, I'm gonna have her show you off axis, she's gonna be doing the same thing thing tilting her breastbone side to side, but off axis, and the plumb bomb swings wildly. So we find that it's quite challenging for people to stay on axis in this particular movement, and that the plumb bob really helps them monitor. So you're facing a mirror, you're, and uh, so she's going to tilt her rib cage staying on axis, and it might not go very far. And at first I'm gonna let you, till you get used to the movement, take your head with you. Go ahead and take your head with you. But notice the plumb bob is staying centered. And what I want you to also make sure you're doing is not simply lifting a shoulder, show them what that looks like, but that the shoulders are just going along for the ride. And it's really the rib cage that's tilting side to side. Now, we're going to rein it in. Maybe put both hands at the top of the plumb bob just to sort of monitor with two hands. And so you're symmetrical. She's going to try to keep her skull as a still point. And so the movement is maybe sometimes smaller than people think. She's doing it beautifully. But we're really interested here in isolating what the rib cage can and can't do. Beautiful. And then she's going to put the plumb bob down, and we're going to just do the skull. So this time the rib cage is the still point, pelvis is the still point. And she's going to just tilt her ear to one side, to, so right ear to right shoulder. And again, uh, actually, so this time, uh, let me remind you of your axis. I'm going to have Jessie put her, no, her finger on her nose to remind her that's her axis of rotation. She just demoed beautifully coming off axis, and I know that's what she was intending to show, because... We see that a lot, but I just want you to notice, even if the movement is smaller, I want your head to stay on axis. Now we're going to put the pieces together. 
So your head is effectively a still point. Your nose stays facing forward and your ears stay level. Your chin stays parallel to the ground. Jesse, please put your hands across your breastbone just to sort of get them out of the picture. And you're going to soften the right knee and you should feel your pelvis hike on the left, drop on the right, and then allow your rib cage to tilt to the left. And then bring, so you're closing the space between your ribs and your pelvis on one side on her left side and opening the space on her right. Now she's going to straighten both legs and come through center and soften her left knee and the pelvis hikes on the right and allow the ribs to go right and the head, notice how she's keeping her head still and straighten the knee and come through center. Head is the still point, everything organizes around a still head. Soften the right knee. Pelvis hikes on the left and the rib cage drops on the left. Good, she's just beautifully demoing, go back and forth a few times. So you're closing the space on one side and opening the space on the other side of your waist. Beautiful. And we would do about five repetitions.